Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure that you tap on the little button there for the notification bell and you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. Well, we've been pretty busy lately. And it's been good stuff. Last weekend, we went to the uh, swap meet, Long Beach, uh, California motorcycle swap meet. That was really nice. Um, something I wanted to mention about them, I don't believe they're going to have one in, in, in December. So that means if you're going to buy Christmas presents there, better buy them in November. Just something to think about. Anyway, um, what have I got going on here? Like I said, as far as working on the flathead is concerned, I'm doing whatever I get interrupted with and we're getting everything caught up. But our wonderful artist department, Fred is a man of, as a, a single man department. The, our artist, Fred, Fred's working on some new t-shirt designs. That's the last thing I'm gonna say about it. Okay. Um, he brought over a carburetor. He has a, uh, the, Fred has some wonderful bikes. One of the bikes he has is an 883 Sportster that he got for his wife. And she rode it for a little bit and she said, you know, this is really not for me. I'd rather ride with Fred. So that's pretty cool. But Fred finally, it sat around for quite a while and Fred said, I'd get this thing running if I keep it or sell it or whatever I do with it. It needs to run. So he pulled the carburetor off because it wouldn't run and he cleaned it out and then he called me and said it wouldn't work anyway and i said bring it over so there are a lot of videos on these carburetors this is the uh the cv carburetor that came on the bike stock it's a 90 something sportster so this is the the proper carburetor that it came with brand new and the bike is basically like new. It's only got, I don't know, something like 3,000 miles on it, and it's a 90-some Sportster. <clears throat> so I opened it up again. Now, Fred had already cleaned it out. I asked him if he cleaned the jets, and he really didn't know where they were. That's not a crime to not know those things. Fred, Fred is a great rider. He's a great guy. We ride a lot together. He is not all the time a motorcycle mechanic. He's learned a lot of stuff lately, but this isn't one of them. So what I'm going to do is show the basic things we want to check. Now, it's already opened up, and which is kind of a shame. I mean, I opened it up and to find everything, and, and I probably should have closed it back up to show opening it up. But in reality, it's open, and if you were to take one of these apart, I always do it old style like I did when I was a kid, and that's I put everything in the order that it came apart so that I can put it back together again. I'm pretty familiar with these, so this will go back together fairly easy. So let's take a look at it. This is the gar carburetor with the slide and the diaphragm removed, and there's everything, like I said, is pretty clean. The jets are removed. Uh, I've checked the float level. Basically, the big deal with the float level, it's usually going to be pretty close to right on, but there is a spring in the needle. You can see this float bounce here. And that's working fine. Now, to check the float level, you put it at an angle like this, and you can check it. Now, here's the pictures on how to do that. And they want it at about a, about a, here we go, correct position like this is the float. It really gets confusing. But when you want to find an exact angle, you can do it. You can actually eyeball it and it'll be fine. And measure it, get the proper measurement for the float, which is right there in the drawing. But it's really... Not very difficult. I've gone through it. It's fine. 
But that is your float level. And the basic thing, the biggest deal is that it's all working properly. You can see that little bouncy on there. And we can hold this thing at the right angle and we can check it. Let's see, it's 430, what is it, 413 to 453. Let's see, 415 to 3, and yeah, we'll go right there roughly. And it's, it's right pretty close on. There's a whole big bunch of, of uh, allowable measurement there. There we go. Anyway, it's close enough. The next thing is this diaphragm. Now, the diaphragm, not a big deal, but what you want to do is hold it up to the light and make sure there's no holes in that diaphragm, and you want to put it on in the right direction, which means the slide is facing out. And the needle goes right down there. And here is the spring. There's a little piece there that it goes on. It drops right in there. And we'll drop that spring in there. And we're going to put this diaphragm very carefully into that groove in the camera's in the camera, in the carburetor's body. Can't tell I used to be a photographer and I'd have to do this stuff on cameras. I actually did. At one point I worked somewhere where all the kids used to bring their, their old cameras in for me to fix. They were some pretty fun kids too. Okay. So we've got three screws hold this on. And the fourth one I believe goes over here. So we're going to leave it out. For the moment and we'll put these in one two three okay there's one that holds a uh, carburetor linkage over there okay there's one Two, now Fred kept that piece of linkage at his house, so I can't check the carburetor completely without it. This screwdriver is getting kind of uh, magnetized. There we go. One. Two, three. All right, now we can set it down and have a look at it. Now, what there was wrong with Fred's work, we can see in this thing. This is the jet holder. This is the main jet holder, and this is the main jet. Well, this thing was so full of uh, rotten, dried-out gasoline that there wasn't a hole in it for the gasoline to go through. So uh, I had a can, a spray can of uh, carburetor cleaner, and that's what I used. But this jet holder, let's see, when you install that, you have to go over that needle real careful like. Put that jet holder on there. And the way I usually do this, I really don't have any problem with them, but I really don't tighten it in until I've got the jet in it. And that's just in case I get a little sloppy and distort that brass holder. If the jet's already in it, that brass holder won't get distorted. So let's tighten the jet into the jet holder. That is the main jet in there. And I think the holder is probably tight enough. But we're going to 
make sure. Now we're happy with it. Um, one of the things when you deal with these is that this little, uh, this is the low speed jet and quite often they're really in there tight and this one was. And what I ended up doing is I put a screwdriver on it and I had to hold that screwdriver in real hard but I had it, the screwdriver is flat right here and I was actually able to get a little bitty adjustable wrench on it so that I could crack that little jet loose. Okay, it's in there and it's nice and tight. Everything's good. It's looking pretty good. Okay, now the next thing is the bowl. I mean, everything in this bowl is clean, wonderful. I think we'll reassemble it. So, here we have... This is the uh, accelerator pump. This is the accelerator pump housing. You have to be real careful not to lose this little O-ring. And I know Fred got a carburetor kit, so all of this stuff is new. This is a real strange O-ring. It's tall. That's got to go in there. So once that's in there, then we got to put this which is the accelerator pump diaphragm. Another thing which has to be checked to make sure it isn't cracked. And of course it was in his kit, so that's a nice new one. And notice that it is, what's the word I'm looking for? It has a tall lip here. And that goes right into the groove on the float bowl. Okay, then there's the spring, and now we're going to have to, that little O-ring is going to hopefully stay in there for me. Whilst I put that together. Okay. One screw, two screw, and the third one. One, two. And three. Get them all started in there all the way. Then I can go around them. Make sure they're in there nice and tight. I know the factory puts them in so tight they're really hard to take loose. I think it must be done by some sort of a robot system. And they're really hard to get loose. Okay. So now... This is the little boot that goes to the accelerator pump rod, okay? And that same rod has to be installed on the linkage here, and it is. And we'll just leave that hanging loose, not falling out, but hanging loose. And this will be limited by the pump body when it's on there so that this will all work fine. Don't be surprised if you go to open up the throttle all the way to check it and you can't do it because this piece here is hanging you up. But when that's hooked to the accelerator pump, it'll work just fine. Just fine. Okay. <clears throat> Now here we go again with me and my white lithium grease, but you know you can reuse these these uh, bowl gaskets. They work just fine over and over again. The only thing is they get a little flattened out, 
and they can leak. If you put a little white lithium grease on them, they won't leak at all. They'll be just dandy. And since this is just dandy, we'll just uh, put it in place. Kind of like that. Now, when you're checking one of these to see why it's not working, get this all pushed in real well. This right here must be clear. If you look at it, you can see there's a little teeny tiny hole in there. That thing must be clear. And the only way I know to check it is by sucking on it. And it's clear. It was not. Okay, now we've got just about everything we could ask for here hooked up. Except I know I dropped that... Uh, There it is. Okay, so we're going to put this carburetor upside down momentarily. And we're going to put, see if I can do this and stay out of the way of the camera. You know, that, that accelerator pump shaft. Okay. Yeah. So you got to get that on there. which is not hard. It's just hard to do with a camera in your face. Okay, there we go. And it's on there. Now all we need to do is put those four screws in. Now the book will actually tell you, let's see. Let me see what I gotta do here in just a minute. Let's get all four of these. There's something that, that about a carburetor, when you get a carburetor all together and you know it's right, it's kind of a cool feeling because it's a, a carburetor is a really, is a real thing. It's a, it does all kinds of neat stuff. The carbotutor. The carbotutor. This is not my favorite kind of carbotutor, but it's a carbotutor and it works well. These little flat slide uh, Kians have been doing a good job. In fact, they use them on Japanese bikes. They use them on bikes all over the world, little different variations of the same carburetor. And they, like, they work pretty well. I like carburetors better that I can adjust on the road without opening up and having to change jets just because I went from 3,000 feet to 8,000 feet above sea level. I just... I love riding in the mountains. Anyway, so here we have carburetor, which just works like a champ. You can see that working right there. And the vacuum will just lift that, uh, lift that slide up. And away we go. So that's about it. That's what I wanted to show. Um, it's ready to give back to Fred. I'll give it back to him tonight. And if I know him, he'll have that Sportster running in the morning. So all will be well. Just remember that gasoline doesn't really have much of a shelf life anymore. It's chemically different than the than the gasoline we had years ago. And I don't say this to criticize it or anything else, it's just a fact. It doesn't have a long shelf life like it used to have. I mean, if that gasoline is a couple months old and you're having difficulty getting a motorcycle to run, try some good fresh gasoline. Mm -hmm. Be surprised. Be surprised. Okay, other than that, there are our shirts. Uh, if you're interested, call pacificmike.com. Call. Type in PacificMike.com and I'm on the internet there. And we do have all those shirts and we have some other designs about to come out. Be about a month on those still. But anyway, that's what we're doing for now. And let's see what's coming up. Chopper Fest is coming up. And that is the December 
11th? Yeah, it's coming up in December, so we'll be mentioning that again. We'll be getting another video out real soon anyway. So until then, we'll see you out on the road.